Thank you so much, Mike, for being with us, and welcome. Yeah, thank you. And uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, just came down to Baltimore this morning, saw a couple of customers. Uh, after this, I go to Goldman Sachs's 10,000 small business graduation. They help small businesses get going, and Warren Buffett and I both uh, speak to them. But anyways, um, thank you for coming and being in the City Data Alliance and uh, for the work that you're leading and the whole team at GovX for all of their great work. So nice round of applause for all the staff that put this together. Uh, I think we all agree that cities and mayoral leadership is more important than ever and you're doing great work using data. The program was designed to help you take that work to the next level and for you to get even more confident at using data and ensure that strong data analysis um, it, the expectations of your city hall and without that you really can't do the job and with it you've got the tools and hopefully a little bit of luck as well to get things going. Uh, we've always said at Bloomberg, in God we trust, everyone else bring data. Uh, data drove all of our work in New York City, and uh, you can just look some examples like Plan YC, uh, carbons emissions inventory, school letter grades, which improved dramatically in the 12 years we were in office, 311, which is the system that you'd call and get answers to everything. Uh, you can have too much data, and I think you've got to be careful of that, the other side of this. When I got into City Hall, I looked at the phone book. We used to have phone books, if you remember the, what they looked like. Um, and uh, under New York City, we were like five pages of 2,000 names, uh, uh, entries a page just for New York City. Now, how anybody could ever find anything in that, I don't know. Or why the government always had the um, uh, outrageous... Uh, uh, view that it was up to the citizens to do all the hard work to find out how to get services rather than it was the obligation of the city to find out who needed services and then provide them. Um, so you've got to be careful on the other side. But I don't think there's any question that if without the numbers you can't do these jobs. And so uh, we try to help people get them as much as we can. Uh, also sharing things. Um, you, you get a chance to learn from each other. You get a chance to see what works elsewhere and think about maybe it would work in your city. Um, no, none of us have all the ideas. And uh, what I think also you really need is to have somebody who will tell you don't do it, that that's a stupid thing to do. And that's maybe the hardest thing uh, nobody, particularly when you're mayor and everybody kisses you and, you know, they salute and all that sort of stuff, and you think, oh, I'm, I'm top of the pile, king of the hill, whatever that song is. Um, the bottom line is I can, you can look at the number of places and times and people where if somebody had the guts to say that is a stupid idea, don't do it, you would have at least changed the idea or satisfied yourself that you were right and done that extra bit of research. And I've always found it's easy. I, I have this idea. I know it works. And then I try to write it out. And, oh, I forgot that. And I forgot this. And pretty soon it was not the greatest idea in the world. And I do have some people that have been with me. Patty Harris is, is here and Linda Gibbs and Allie Jaffin. Um, and I don't always like it when they tell me that I'm stupid. Um, the annoying thing is they probably write, but uh, nevertheless, um, seriously, it is exactly it's it's what you really need. And leaders that don't have that make mistakes and they blow up. And it's it's the most important thing. You've got to find people that will tell you. They don't have to do it publicly. They can do it privately. But they have the guts to walk up and say, "Look, you don't really want to do that. Here's why." And even if it's just an instinct that having a second opinion, if you want to, if, if it's your health, you go to a doctor to get a second opinion. And I would argue when you're doing something like running a city, you should have, certainly have a second opinion. You know, we were talking before, I was talking to somebody who was working on uh, the virus and my girlfriend came down with the virus for the third time this week. And my sister and I have not had it. And I I was in uh, Germany and France last week, 
He must have taken pictures with 500 people and shaken a million people's hands and sat next to them in the subway and everything. And I've never come down with it. And I have a theory that my mother, who was born in 09, might have caught it, the Spanish flu, which was a similar kind of virus, back in 1918, 1919. And if she did, maybe she passed on antibodies to my sister and I. But there's something, some reason why the two of us haven't caught it. And actually, NYU is doing a study, which we both volunteered to be in, of people who didn't get it to try to figure out what was the difference there. It's another way of looking at it. Um, if I had told my professors uh, back at Johns Hopkins that someday I would be here speaking to a group of uh, important people that led cities uh, here at Peabody, they would uh, not believe it. Um, I was, for the record, somebody who always made the top half of the class possible. <laughs> you have to think about that a little bit. Um, seriously, uh, thank you all for being part of this program and for all the great work that you're doing in your cities. Uh, Bloomberg Philanthropies are folk happy to be, uh, thrilled to be working with you. We want to make a difference. And if you think about it, federal governments take the money from the public and then they give it to the next level down, states or the legislatures. It doesn't get them down. Most of it never get, or a lot of it doesn't get down to the place where you really can do something with it. And that's where May is, where the rubber re meets the road and you really get a chance to do something and see whether it works and adjust it if it doesn't. And you're held accountable. And it's inspiring to uh, uh, see what cities around the world are doing. Uh, the fact is, though, mayors do need all the support that we and resources that we can get. And uh, the only mistake mayors can make is not to reach high enough. There's going to be great challenges always and great opportunities. And if you can help one kid get through school or one business stay in, 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 as a going concern or um, places for people to live or to, to develop new things, uh, it's the most satisfying thing you can do because you can go home and see what you've done. And, you know, I don't mean to knock Congress, but if you're there, maybe you voted, maybe you didn't. They don't even bother to count your votes, is my theory. Um, you know, so what? But the, the mayors are the one part of government where uh, you have a challenge and you can meet the challenge and make a difference. Uh, our foundation is committed to providing the support that... Uh, uh, we think would be helpful. Um, you're here because you're always already doing a lot of good work, uh, but this program is designed to take you to the next level, and uh, we developed it to be uh, to become make you more confident users of data and help you uh, understand, create an expectation in city halls as to what's available and how you can do something with it. Um, let me just tell you that 20 years before running for mayor. I started a business back in 1981 uh, to make financial data more acceptable and accessible in real time and so that investors could make better decisions. And that company has done fairly well, thank you. But um, despite all the changes in technology and finance, it's still the same thing. People still need data and cities need data and companies need data. Uh, we have a saying, in God we trust, everyone else bring data. Uh, I can't speak for God, but um, uh, if I were him, her, or it, uh, I would make sure <laughs> that I got the data before I decided who I would call and when. So hopefully I'll be around for a while. And I'm trying to be nice to him, her, or it, uh, so I don't get called too soon. Anyways, <laughs> data seriously is, is what we're here to, to work with you. Uh, you saw how data can uncover problems and point the ways to solutions. Uh, part of our work tackling, tackling climate change. Uh, we set a goal of cutting uh, um, carbon emissions by 30% uh, by 2030, and to reach that goal, we knew we had to yeah, go where the emissions were coming from, and uh, there's never been a comprehensive citywide inventory of emissions, so we did one and we uncovered the not so surprising fact that uh, giving cities reputation for traffic gridlock you might think that cars and trucks were responsible for most emissions, but the truth of the matter is it's not cars and trucks in cities. It is buildings. That's where the pollution comes from. 
Um, and uh, the biggest source of greenhouse gases in most cities is from buildings, and that's because of the dirty fuel that they lose. And uh, just 10% uh, of the city's buildings were pumping out um, uh, more emissions when we studied it than all of the cars and trucks combined. So there's no question what the, where the stuff came from, and then you can find what to do about it. Uh, we did launch a target program to convert those buildings to cleaner heating fuel, and it did help us cut emissions in New York City by 13% in just six years, and the air when we got done was cleaner than it had ever been in modern day. Uh, we had a mayor, John Lindsay, who was very popular at least history shows that. I don't think he was when he was in office. He was kind of controversial. Um, but um, when he moved to New York City uh, after business school, uh, he said, I never trust air that I can't see. Uh, let me point out that John Lindsay is no longer with us. And uh, maybe it was because he, bre he was breathing the air back then. But there's just no question. A lot of the pollution that people inhale comes from cities and to the buildings in the cities. And uh, we can do something about that, and we showed that in New York City. And you could be leaders in your cities and try to uh, get people to use cleaner fuel. And one of the ways to do it is to say to the landlord, you and your significant other and your kids are breathing this air. And we're going to tell them that the air is bad and it's coming from you. And maybe that'll get you to do it. And we found that really was an effective ways of convincing some landlords to try to make a difference when they bring it down to my family. Um, we also used data to hold ourselves accountable to the public when uh, we were in City Hall. And uh, we created a system to grade schools based on how well they were doing to improve student performance. And that data empowered parents to make informed choices about their kids' education. Uh, which helped push schools in New York City to uh, do dramatically better. Uh, the 50% uh, at the bottom moved up dramatically, and everybody said that that was the group that you couldn't do anything with. Well, it turns out that if you hold teachers accountable and you give teachers fair compensation and resources that they need and buildings that they can be proud to be in with the kids, that you can do things. And when people say, um, oh, that's a problem we can't do anything about. My answer is that's the best thing that could ever happen to a mayor because then you have an opportunity. Uh, there's an old story, an adage that says you, a crisis is never something you should waste. It's too important. Well, that's a good example of a crisis that we have in this country. We are dumbing down the school systems across this country, and if mayors could stand up and maybe fight the state legislatures who are doing that, uh, we could, they could make a very big difference. And if you take a look at the kids who were not doing well before the virus and then two years without any education and start thinking, you know, what would you do if you were one of those kids? The opportunities that you would have are so limited and so scary that uh, you just you can't sit around and let other kids go through that. So you've got to do something about it. Um, you want to, parents are part of the equation. You've got to let them uh, have a say, but you've got to give them informed information so that they can make informed choices. Uh, what we did is we helped reform uh, and raise graduation rates by 42% to a record high, and the grades uh, were, uh, uh, were better. We created new ways to capture data and show it to the teachers and show it to the parents. And even then, Sometimes people didn't want to improve the school systems. But we certainly showed you can do it, and now uh, you've got to look in a mirror if you don't want to do it and say, you know, how can you condemn kids to the future that they would have? Uh, 311, one last thing I just wanted to mention. Um, I mentioned, talked to before about a one stop place to get information for city services. Um, I used to, when I drove down the street in the car, if I saw somebody uh, lying down in the street, I would tell the cop that it was with me, or I would pick up the phone and call 311 and report it, and I should say, and I'm going to come back and look and see how long it took you to get there. And it actually worked. Uh, the homeless in New York City was dramatically less when we left office than when we came into office, and still today, uh, it's dr dramatically better than in most other big cities across America. 
and it comes from focusing and doing something about it. And if I saw a cop walk by and there was somebody, I'd go up to the cop and say, that's your job, call it in. And you know, he just looks at you and didn't pull a gun and shoot me, uh, but he certainly, while I stood there, called it in and you can see the results. We actually had a ways of measuring the homeless. We had, we sent out, I think it was like 500 uh, volunteers on the first Monday in February, if I remember correctly, uh, and we dressed them as vagrants and assigned different places in the city where to go, down uh, under the building, uh, on an alley, uh, on, a, on a railroad car or a subway car or whatever. And then we counted, we have 2,000 volunteers that night who counted the homeless, and we assumed that we got the same percentage of the dummy ones that we got, of uh, the real ones and he plotted it, and each year we brought it down for 12 years. So you can do something about homeless. And I will say, when I drive around New York City, it isn't perfect, but I see very few homeless. And then uh, there's an awful lot of cities where it's an enormous problem. And uh, so, but you can do something about it. Um, I did one time call City Hall to report a pothole, because it, uh, it worked, uh, the, the 311 number. Uh, the operator said, what's your name? And I said, Bloomberg. And she said, well, how do you spell that? Uh, only in New York, I guess. But that actually also happened when I was voting one time. I went up and said, Bloomberg. And she said, how do you spell it? Um, anyways, uh, we're among the first cities to digitize 311. And uh, uh, it, it, it was really something that we demonstrated that data does work. Um, our administration was never shy about bothering, uh, borrowing great ideas from other cities, and that's another thing you should do. I think meetings like this, um, reading newspapers from other cities and looking to see what kind of problems they have is very informative and it's really targeted because you can see the kind, what happens in one city is very likely to happen in the other cities, so the information that you get is, re is really useful. Um, and I think that uh, if you uh, focus, we can get back in the next year or so and uh, look in a mirror. And if you've made a difference, you should be very proud because there are not very many elected officials who make a difference, but the mayors are where you're going to find the ones that do. And we're honored to be able to help you and work with you. And I want to thank uh, uh, Harvard and all of their uh, efforts to uh, do the same thing and Johns Hopkins, uh, my alma mater. Uh, so let me turn this back over to Latricia Le Le and thank her for the whole team at GovX for what they're doing. I'm heading off to Goldman Sachs, 10,000 small businesses, and um, see you uh, sometime next time I'm in your city, whenever it is. So thank you. All the best. <laughs>